Hello everyone, I'm Lieutenant Ryan Flood, PIO at the Greenville County Sheriff's Office. This critical incident community briefing will provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred at 305 East Crest Drive in Simpsonville on June 14, 2019. In a moment, you will see relevant video footage and photographs. You will hear a 911 call from an alarm company, radio transmissions, and learn of additional facts that will help provide an accurate overview of what we know occurred at this time of the investigation. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office conducts comprehensive investigations relating to officer-involved shootings, and these investigations may require investigators to conduct extensive interviews, review video and audio recordings, and possibly analyze forensic evidence. Consistent with all officer-involved shootings, we do not draw any conclusions about whether the deputy's actions were consistent with their policies and in accordance with the law until the investigation has been thoroughly completed. A brief disclaimer, the content you're about to see in here may be disturbing to some viewers. When deputies are put in a position that requires them to use physical force to effect an arrest or defend themselves against a threat, the actions can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, some of the language heard in this video might be viewed as strong and offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, I'm Captain Brown of the Greenville County Sheriff's Office, Office of Professional Standards. I'm going to provide you with a brief summary of an officer-involved shooting that took place at 305 East Crest Drive in Simpsonville. On June 13th, at around 11.49 p.m., the Greenville County Dispatch Center received a call from an alarm company regarding a panic alarm activation from the residents of 305 East Crest Drive. The alarm company attempted to make contact with the owner of the cell phone, but did not receive an answer. The alarm company then notified the Greenville County Dispatch Center. The county dispatcher also attempted to make contact with the owner of the cell phone without success. A deputy was then dispatched to the home at around 11.54 p.m. Here is a phone call recording from the alarm company followed by the corresponding radio broadcast. Greenville County Sheriff's Office, unit 321. Hi, this is Jonathan Five Star Urgent Response requesting assistance for a subscriber. In Simpsonville, South Carolina. What's the address? That's going to be 305 East Crest Drive. East Crest Drive? Uh, yeah. Okay, what is it a reference to? So we received an open silent line, um, but there is no answer on call back. Okay, and is, do you have a cross street or intersection? I have the nearest cross street as Plantation Drive. Is it coming from a vehicle, the residence, or what? Um, it was a. It looks to be. A, what is it? A panic alarm from a cell phone activation. Echo fifteen, Greenville. Echo fifteen, was it? Copy of 1044 Bravo from 305 East Crest Drive. Hello. Just after midnight, the first deputy arrived on scene and rang the doorbell, but was unable to make contact with anybody inside. As the deputy proceeded to walk off the front porch to begin the perimeter check of the home, he noticed movement from inside and returned to the front door to further investigate. As the deputy returned to the front door, he noticed a man through the window on the left side of the door. The man who was later identified as the homeowner was seen on the deputy's body-worn camera and observed by the deputy holding a gun. Body-worn cameras are used by all officers assigned to field duties. They are typically worn at chest level and give general perspective of what was within the camera's field of view. Once activated, the recording goes back 30 seconds in an effort to capture sudden incidents. The audio, however, does not begin recording until 30 seconds into the segment. This particular incident recording began after the deputy initially stepped off the front porch. According to the deputy, after noticing the man inside, he illuminates him with his flashlight, and as he did so, 
the man who was initially walking away from the front door turned and pointed his gun at him. In an effort to defend himself against a perceived threat, the deputy fired his issued weapon as he retreated off the porch and subsequently struck the individual multiple times. After a brief communication exchange between the deputy and the homeowner, the deputy entered the residence and began to provide medical attention until EMS arrived on scene. Sheriff's office! Drop the gun now! Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Throw that gun out the door! Throw the gun out the door! Yeah, throw the gun out the door. Let me see your hands. Who are you? Yeah, you pointed the gun at me. Who are you? The sheriff's office. What are you here for? Because we got an alarm call. Oh my God, call the cops, please. I am the cops. Call the ambulance, please. All right, where's the gun? Where's the gun? All right, don't move it. Are you the only one here? What's wrong with you, man? I'm up here. Here. Where are you hit? In my groin and my fucking chest. The fuck you doing, man? You pointed a gun at me, man. You were in my house. Yeah, well, send me 1051. I you rang your doorbell because we got I'm no alarm really call. I'm really bad in my groin. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't you don't shoot. Come here, hold this light. <laughs> Get the ambulance here, man. I'm gonna They're fucking coming. die. They're coming. Just stay you with me. You shot me here and you shot me here. All right. Oh my God. Just take some deep the breaths. Fuck! What? What is I the... saw lights and I heard a doorbell ring and I got it with my gun. I'm a concealed weapons guy. Okay. Get the ambulance here, man. I'm gonna die. Hurry. No, you're not. You're not gonna die. Have you called me? Have you called me? Is the ambulance, ambulance coming? They're, they're coming. They're coming. I'm on my feet. I'm, on, I'm sleeping. I'm, I got my fucking CPAP. Please. Somebody hit a panic alarm for, for nobody, the love of God. Nobody here. What's the address here? 305 East Crest Drive. That's where it came in from. We don't have an alarm. We don't have an alarm. Well, that's what we Come got on, this man, much I'm bleeding for. really bad. All right, hang on. Come on. Hang on. This is going to hurt. No, okay? it's up. It's higher. It's higher? It's higher. Let me see. Shot me right here, dude. Okay. You motherfucker. Why did you do that? Because you pointed a gun at me, Dude, man. Dude, you came to my house at 12 o'clock at night. I'm sleeping. God damn, I got to protect my house. Oh, my God. Get the, get the ambulance. Go ahead. Man. I'm going to die. They're coming. They're coming. You motherfucker. I can't believe you did this to me. I'm good. This guy's got two gunshot wounds. The fuck? I can't believe you did this to me, man. Okay. We're not going to talk about this right now. We're going to focus on keeping you alive, okay? So take some deep breaths and calm down, and we're gonna get, we're, you're gonna be okay, all right? For the next several minutes, first aid was provided to the man until EMS arrived on scene and subsequently transported him to the hospital for medical treatment. The individual has since been released from the hospital and is recovering from his wounds. At this time in the investigation, we have learned that the panic alarm was received from a cell phone medical assist app from an occupant inside the residence. However, there was no immediate emergency that was needed. The individual who was shot was not charged with any crime and therefore his information and identity will not be released as part of this video. A Smith & Wesson 38 caliber pistol was recovered from the scene by agents from the South Carolina State Law Enforcement Division. Consistent with all officer involved shootings, the South Carolina State Law Enforcement Division, along with the 13th Circuit Solicitor's Office, will continue to investigate the facts, conduct interviews, and analyze evidence to determine whether the deputy's actions were within the scope of the law. 
in a separate and internal investigation, the GCSO Office of Professional Standards will investigate to determine whether the deputy's actions were consistent with the strict guidelines and standards set forth in the Sheriff's Office policy. If you would like further information on the Sheriff's Office Use of Force policy, please visit our website at gcso.org and click on the Use of Force link found under the Resources tab. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident community briefing.